Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about the top five baits for bass fishing in April. If you're a bass fisherman, April is the month. It is the month to get out on the water and catch some fish. Depending on where you are in the country, the fish can be in a little bit different phases, but unless you're way up north, April is just the peak of the season. It is amazing fishing. Uh, April will bring more pre-spawn fish in most places. Uh, it's going to bring the spawn. Across the vast majority of the country, those fish are spawning in April. And in some places, there's even going to be well, if you're all the way down south, there's probably already some post spawners, but by end of April, you start seeing post spawners in the middle of the country as well. So there's just a lot going on in April. There's a lot going on with baits as well. Today, we're gonna talk about the top five or maybe six baits that will really help you catch these fish this time of year. Now let's start with the faster moving baits and then we'll circle back on some of the slower moving stuff and really get into the details with these fish. Uh, there is definitely still some power fishing to be done. Uh, first one is going to be a smaller swim bait. By smaller, I mean not a giant trout or shiner imitating swim bait. We're talking a shad imitating swim bait. That's a 4.8 Kitek. That is one of those baits that I know I can pick up day after day after day all over the country and just get bit. It's big enough to get a really, really big bite, uh, but it's small enough to catch a lot of fish as well. So it's not like you're eliminating your shot at just catching fish, uh, but you can get those truly monster, monster bites on it. Uh, it's amazing how big of a fish will eat that, that 4.8 Kitek there. Now, as far as how we rig them, I do two very different things, okay? So this is rigged on an exposed head. This is my head. This is the Matt Allen swim bait head in 3 8 ounce. And that's just generally fan casting in open water. The other one is that guy right there that and i like to just barely skin hook that that's an owner flashy swimmer that's the five aught those two baits will just or those two hooks will cover virtually everything i need to do so here's the deal if you're just covering water you want to be going down the bank i throw it on that exposed head if you're going to be up really really shallow i throw it on that weedless setup so that i can drag it through everything now if you can see that the bass are actively chasing bait fish, I mean, either blowing up on them or pushing them back in the shallows, you can physically see that the bass are chasing shad around, 100% stick with the flashy swimmer. You need that blade. When bass are chasing bait fish in the springtime, having a blade on that swim bait will get you way more bites than throwing it on the bear head. If they are not actively chasing bait, if you're just trying to pick off fish, you're way better off with that standard jig head like that one. So that's the first bait, 4.8 Kitek. And if you're not familiar with these videos, down in the video description, we'll link everything for you. I'll link the bait, a couple of our favorite colors. It's gonna be Pro Blue, Red Pearl, and Electric Shad, I can already tell you that. The hooks as well, we'll give you the exact hooks everything so that you can get out there and replicate it. Uh, next up is going to be the lipless. Okay, this is an LV500. Uh, there are also some great budget options. So I'll link you one budget option as well. But the lipless, as you know, for the past couple of months, the lipless is a major player in the spring. It will continue to be a major player in April. Now, as the water warms, the grass begins to grow and it gets a little bit harder to rip them on bottom to do that little hop technique that we talk about in the cold water. We still do it, but you need to pop it harder to break it free of that grass and you'll catch big fish on that lipless. Now, as that grass gets up, you can also just fan cast, just cover water with the lipless. 
use it the way it was meant to be fished originally. We spend a lot of time fishing a lipless like it's a jig on the bottom. But there's a time and a place in the spring for just covering water with that lipless. Next one, now as far as colors go, I almost skipped over that. You either want to be throwing a shad imitator or a craw imitator. That's where 100% of my time is spent. So if the water's really dingy, uh, you might see me throw on a chartreuse shad like this. You've been seeing me throw that a lot lately. If it's a little cleaner, like it is out here today, then I switch over to something like that. More of a chrome, that's BP Golden Shiner. And then craw, there's always a place for that craw color in the springtime. The last of the reaction baits is going to be a square bill. Or in this case, it's not truly a square bill, but it's that shallow diving crankbait. That's that Spro Little John 50. That's the blood craw color. I've talked about this many times that that is my favorite color in the spring. That sort of see-through red. It's just a fish catcher. The really nice thing about a square bill is that as the fish are pushing back, because if you look behind me, we're in the back of a pocket here. This is the background you will see behind me most of the spring. That's the beauty of April. The fish are pushing back. So you might still catch me out on secondary points, but for the most part, my fishing is transitioning to backs of pockets, spawning flats, coves. That's where I like to spend my time if I can get away with it. So these are the kinds of areas that I'm fishing. So as I look back here, I see some rocks, some laydowns, a couple of stumps up there. All great fish catching habitat. Fish are going to be up on that stuff and I can fish that and I can get those fish. But if I throw up that shallow and I get snagged and I have to go in there with the boat, I'll spook all the fish out because of how shallow it is. So the nice thing about that square bill is it will deflect and bounce off of that cover really well. And I can catch a lot of those fish without spooking them out of there. You start throwing baits that'll hang up like a lipless dirt shallow like that. And you have to go up in there to get it back. So that's why both of those are still in play. A little bit deeper or fast moving, right up tight to cover, right up shallow. They work great as a one-two punch. Now, transitioning over to soft baits, well, actually, I have one other thing for you. So this is hands down, that's my favorite color, that blood craw. But there are regional things. There are on a certain place, a different color seems to work better. Lately, for those of you that are local to Tim and I, right, we're on the Tennessee River. That fire craw color, I have been doing so much damage with that thing the last couple of weeks. So same bait, but our water's been dingy. So instead of that clear, I went to that solid with that fiery orange belly. I mean, I've lost count of how many fish I have caught on that thing the last couple of weeks. Sometimes it's fish after fish after fish after fish when you get a school fired up. It's just too much fun. Okay, now soft baits. I've got three of those as well. So three moving baits or reaction baits, three slower moving soft baits. Uh, first one is going to be the Senko. If I could only have one, it's a five inch Yamamoto Senko, green pumpkin, black flake. Now there are a lot of other really good colors, but if I could only have one, <laughs> I mean, all day long, every day, that's the one. Now, as far as rigging, that depends on water clarity because I understand that you could live in all sorts of places. You might be in the deep south in a swamp. You might be on a highland reservoir with 40 feet of visibility and you might be in a variety of places in between. So you can take this same Senko and again, the five inch. And the reason why, there's a couple of reasons. One is that as you travel around the country, the five inch just works, whether they're big fish or small fish, it'll catch them all. Now you can go bigger to try and focus on bigger fish, but a five inch just gets bit. Also, as we transition into and through April, the spawn is happening. We're not gonna dive into to bed fishing and all that stuff today, 
Um, but be aware that even if you're not actively bed fishing, you will interact with those fish. If you go down a shoreline in a cove, you're going to interact with fish that are spawning. They tend to just pick at the baits. They're not really aggressive. The bigger the bait, the more likely that they won't get the hook. So the five inch Senko is more likely that they'll pick up the whole thing. Even if you're not actively fishing for those fish. Now, as far as rigging, if you've got cleaner water, if you're in a highland reservoir and your water tends to be clean, wacky rig it, okay? Take a size one aught. Uh, I use a Gamakatsu Finesse Wide Gap. That's the hook I use for it. Hook it right through the middle. You're ready to go. You can throw that on six to eight pound line in crystal clear water. Now I can take this same exact bait. And I put it on a Gamakatsu EWG Super Line. So that's a stronger hook. Um, and that's a, it's a, for Texas rigging, it's a wide gap hook. And I put that in there and it'll take up about that much of that worm. So a three aught EWG super line and I'm in business. And I can fish that on as low as 10 to 12 pound and as high as 15 to 20 pound, depending on the size of the fish and how heavy the cover is. Uh, but it will fish on all those different lines. So with two hooks, and one bait, I can fish everything from crystal clear water to absolutely flipping in the thickest cover, and I'm good to go. The next one is going to be the shaky head. This is a T-Mac worm. That particular color is called tilapia. Tilapia is one of my favorite springtime colors. Just in general, with soft baits in the spring, I love to have some blue in the baits. Um, my personal belief is that it has something to do with imitating a bluegill up there in the shallows. Whether or not that's true is irrelevant. Having a little blue in the baits catches a ton of fish this time of year. So, lightweight shaky head, uh, eighth, three sixteenths, I max out at a quarter, uh, but usually lighter is better. Then that's a T-Mac worm, straight tailed worm, tilapia, green pumpkin, you know, those basic natural colors. And this is a bait that I can fish in and around cover. So I can fish this in and around laydowns. The particular shaky head that I use is kind of an arky style head. So it's really good at coming through things. It's excellent for fishing docks this time of year. As fish pull into the backs of pockets on a lot of lakes, that means they're pulling up around dock pilings. Uh, and a shaky head is a great way to get in there and fish those pilings effectively. Uh, it's just a fish catching bait. A lot of people, this is my number one, this would be a lot of people's number one. Um, and it's a really close second for me. A shaky head is deadly. And then last but not least is a jig. The jig has a place in the spring. It has a place year round, but I love jig fishing in the spring. Um, if I could only have one, it's a pitching style head. Okay, day in and day out, I can do, in fact, it's almost identical to that shaky head. See that? It will do just about anything, but a jig paired with a beaver style trailer. So just a do nothing, natural appearance. Not a lot of action, but great profile. Use a natural colored jig, okay, and there's I've got about 10 different options that I could switch between, but just a very natural green pumpkin, pumpkin brown type color, and then paired up with a trailer that has a little bit of blue in it. Maybe that's Magic Cross Swirl. That's what's on that jig. That one's Florabama. See how they've just got that little bit of blue hue to them. It makes a big difference this time of year. Doesn't matter if you are sight fishing, doesn't matter if you're fishing docks looking for a big bite, running secondary points looking for those big females that are still coming into spawning areas, or maybe you're catching fish that have already done spawn and they're going back out towards the end of the month, that jig is a very effective way to catch them. It's got a big hook on it, so I can throw it on 15 to 17 pound line and I can really lean on those fish. And I know even if I hook a true pre-spawn giant, I will get that fish in the boat. April is an awesome, awesome time for bass fishing. Get 
out there. Make sure that you fish this month. If you have not fished yet this year, you're about to blow your opportunity at some of the best fishing of the whole year. It's time to get on the water. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Remember, we'll link all the baits for you down in the video description. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.